dark layer. So the reason why I like. Um, and then I realized that my phone didn't record anything. Welcome back to Beautiful Tutorials. And today's tutorial you will absolutely love because I will show you how I draw the pattern on my client's photos how I choose the pattern. Actually, I will draw randomly the pattern, but show you how I think when picking the pattern and following the stroke. So you will follow me and I will draw right on the spot. So let's dive in. Now, first of all, before picking a pattern, what I always do is uh, choosing the shape. So I will pre-draw the shape first and then select the pattern that I will uh, do for this client. So I will just randomly draw the shape for my client. I hope this is a good shape. I know you're probably like, Slash, how can you draw the shape from the one time? Because it takes practice. I've been doing this 100 times till I can draw a shape from the first trial. And, but I always on my clients, I definitely don't draw the shape just randomly. I always follow the brown mapping. And the brown mapping, I have the video, I think it's in the right corner. You can click this for the brown mapping. How, what are their steps to draw the shape? Because it's the whole process how I select the shape for my client and make the shape balance with each other, with the right and left side. So once you draw your outline, your shape, the second step, what I see is, all right, I see the strokes, the hairs are flowing towards this section. After this, they are coming down. So I will select the spine based on my client's hair flow in this case, but I don't like the spine being like this. So I always like to at least extend my spine somewhere below the arch. So that's what I would choose for this client. And then I would just follow the strokes to pre-draw the shape. And I feel they are a little bit apart. So that's why I'm going to erase them and try again. And that's what I want you to also see that I also am picky about the strokes and how they look like. So you can see me doing the hair stroke as I go. Okay, now this is better. And then let me draw the brow front. I actually did record this tutorial a minute ago, but my camera ran out of battery and I didn't record it even on my cell phone. Somehow two things came at the same time, like they, they both didn't work out. So I'm just doing this one more time. And then after the spine, I'm having my strokes that are coming down. The only thing that I don't like right now is this. So I would actually prefer this to be more coming from this spot. Like this. So this way it looks better. And just making sure the strokes are light at the outside of the shape. Now I'm going to do my second layer. So I'm going to fill in the strokes at the second layer. But also I just want to show you uh, the reason why the pattern always looks good, it's my little secret, is when you keep even distance between your strokes. This is the only way how the pattern looks neat. So I'll go in to put the strokes in between, also in the middle, so it looks neat and clean. But I will indeed make them tiny bit lighter and thinner so we have a dimension between the strokes now because this area is still light so i'm going to fill this area more with the strokes or with the shading to create more dark darkness in this area since we have quite a density in hair strokes in her own uh, hairs over there and I will transform this layer into a dark layer and I will see the difference. So th that's why I really like Procreate. If you don't have iPad and you are doing hair stroke, I suggest to get iPad. And this is iPad, which is very old, but it still works very well. And then I'm going to add 
tiny strokes attached to our main line. So in this case, I've did this connection. So if this is the main stroke, these are the tiny strokes I'm attaching, just because her hair flow flows like this. But in usual situation, I would do it from the right side. So both ways works good. And then if you want to, you can add more to the front, but usually the front, I don't want to overly saturate as saturate. And sometimes also looks nice when your strokes are coming out of the shape, but also it's only if you are advanced artists and you can make them very light. Otherwise, they will not look good. They will be too dark. Like even, even here. So yeah, that's it. You can even play a little bit with the shape. I would maybe give her, let's see if we can give her another shape. Well, there is a lot of room to play around. You can totally do this with your clients that are coming to your air stroke procedure. That would be more professional if you can pre-draw the strokes on their photo before they come to your studio. And you can charge for this service such a huge amount of money because it's indeed a full job to pre-draw, to create the strokes. It's charged a high, this is a high-end service for the clients, totally and it's pretty interesting to do so. So let me show you our uh, next client. Let's play around with this client. So how I would do my hair shock for this client. First of all, again, we start with the shape. In this case, I'm just choosing the soft eyebrow. She doesn't have an arch, she's uh, soft, looking client, so looking girl. So soft eyebrow will fit for her the most without the arch. And then my spine will be in the middle because that's where all the strokes are coming. If you see here, they're like following a little bit towards the middle. So again, maybe let me select something which is pink and that's the spine. And then I will again following the spine The only difference this has with the previous one is these upper strokes are way longer. Again, just because I see the client's hair flow and I think this way just will better mimic the client's hairs. So then I'm going to add, let me try a different way. Maybe let me try a different way transition from here and then from there. I actually have a patterns on the hair strokes. I think some of them are free for you to practice. If you are watching this from the website, they should be under this video. If you're watching this from the YouTube, you should go to the website and check this on the website. Then I'm turning this layer into darker layer, maybe even removing the shape and it's already quite nice. I'm so surprised. I don't even need to add additional strokes, but if I were to add additional strokes, probably also not much, not much to add. So even though I'm not following a pattern, but just randomly creating strokes like this, because already pattern, I've done so many patterns in my life. I've created so many patterns in my life. So they're just all, uh, already in my head. So even I'm trying to do something that is new, I'm still creating the same, the same pattern I already created. So anyways, very actually nice eyebrow. I like it. I give myself five star, <laughs> five star for this. All right, let's move to our next client. So this is more challenging, but actually it's not. So again, if you create the shape first, I think a lot of you are confused about what pattern should you choose? Uh, I would stick to similar pattern, just having different spines. So the pattern could be absolutely the same, but having different spines depending on the client's hair flow. And that's what I do with my students. We always start with one pattern. Learning this completely 
before they jump into the second pattern. If you're trying to learn so many patterns at once, you will fail. Learn one and then move to second one. So here I will select a spine, which is like this. And then the flow is also pretty similar. Also a little trick, if you see this, uh, they are actually coming down towards one spot. So they are like a little bit like this. So then my brow front will also follow. Now here I'm doing tiny bit different. So I'm crossing through crossing through the strokes that I pre-draw earlier. A little bit different, but you can do it the same way as we just discussed previously. Or I know it probably will be confusing for you what I just did. You can rewatch this video many times to see what I did. What was just, if I show this, let's say if this is your uh, strokes like this, and it's spine. So I was just crossing through like this. It also looks pretty good. And here we are, another shape, another amazing shape. Let me see if I can add more strokes that are coming out of the shape. So many things you can create with hair stroke pattern. It's so fun to play around. I love it. I love hair shock technique. I absolutely love this. I can spend a lot of time drawing these. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you kind of figure out what is my way before thinking, before choosing the pattern. Again, if you tag me, if you practice this on your own, if you use the pattern that I have, if you try your hair shock and you want me to see you, correct you, what you need to do is tag me on the story. So I usually reshare to my story and underneath I will type what I think about your hair shock, where you can improve and etc. If you don't know where it is, it's on beauty slash. So Instagram beauty slash, and I will see you there. Also, if you have a questions towards anything that is in this video, you can comment under this video. As anything else, I will see you next week on our weekly tutorials with beauty slash. <laughs> see you next time.